I'm your host, Logan23. You're joining me for Witness about a God Romance, Chapter 23, Guide to Galway. The gentle motion of the train keeps you asleep long after the compartment is filled with sunlight. But suddenly... Ah! You jolt awake, frantically looking around for an intruder or something else to explain Cassian's yell. What? What is it? It was just... a nightmare. A nightmare about what? You jumping into the water again off the boat. Donovan's murder. Okay, we're just jumping right into a 30 second diamond choice. Bull casting towards you, gently pushing his hand down to rest on your chest. You wrap your arms around him and kiss him on the top of his head. You want to talk about it? It's just the last thing I ever said to my brother was that I was disappointed in him. Our family was so close, especially after Da died, but Donovan, he wanted to be important outside of us. I guess with so many siblings, maybe. Donovan started to distance himself from us more and more, but so even though I was younger, I still had to be a big brother to everyone else, even before he was actually gone. He smoothed down Cassian's hair, loving me, letting him talk. In the years before he died, we fought all the time. He thought I was trying to show him up by being the good son. I think he was hurt that our siblings and Ma started to rely on me, even though he was never wanted that responsibility anyway. Cassian pauses, his eyes just staring at nothing. You really don't have to talk about it. He takes a steadying breath and then presses on. I knew he was in the mob, hanging out with Finn and all those bad guys, and one night we really got into it. I was angry because he'd forgotten our sister's birthday. I wasn't even yelling, all I said was that I was disappointed in him, that our doll would have been disappointed in him too. He sniffs a little, and your fingers trail over his cheeks to wipe away a few tears. He just stared at me for a few minutes before leaving. That was the last time I saw him alive. That was the night Finn murdered him? Yeah, and now that I know that Donovan had went to him to tell him he was out, that he couldn't do this to his family anymore, I have all this guilt. His death was my fault. Cassian's voice breaks on the last word, and you hold him tighter against you, feeling his silent tears drop onto your skin. You had inspired your brother to do the right thing. His last act was to try and make you proud of him. It's not your fault that Donovan died, Cassian. It's Finn's. He clings to you, nodding absently into your chest. You're right. The only person to blame is that bastard Finn. He took my brother from me, from my family, right when Donovan wanted to come back to us. The heavy sigh, Cassian sits up and looks at you. He rests his forehead on your sharing breath. Thanks for listening to my troubles, love. I'm always here for you, no matter how messy things get. Tilting his lips to meet yours, Cassian gives you a tender kiss that's twinged with a hint of salt. But we have to focus on the here and now. We should be in Galloway soon. With this one last kiss, you untangle yourself from Cassian. You feel the train start to slow and the conductor announcing the stop to Galloway, first in Irish and then in English. Finally, one step closer to home. You and Cassian make your way to the nearest exit door and disembark onto the train station platform once the train has stopped. Commuters and travelers move past you on the platform towards the city. We need to contact Tomas. Let's see if there's a phone we can use. Follow Cassian out to the street, where he has a brief conversation with a shopkeeper before she hands him a phone. Cassian, is that you? Yeah, it's us. We made it to Galloway. So, when's the rendezvous? About the... No, no, Tomas. You said as long as we got to Galloway... I know what I said. Things are just taking longer with some of the paperwork, and it prevented the plane from taking off on time. My superiors haven't outright said anything, but I suspect the mob has been putting pressure on their law enforcement contacts to block this. How much longer, then? A day, two at the most. Galway's much safer than you'll be in the country, since you'll be able to blend in with the crowds. I'll send you an encrypted email tomorrow morning with all the details of the extraction. But... Are you sure we'll see be safe, like 100% positive? No one is truly safe, that's an idiot question. Yes, absolutely! Best way to hide is in hide in plain sight. You'll be way less exposed than on your own in the middle of the country. I guess that makes sense. I know this is stressful, but we're covering our tracks well. We can afford to hang out for one more day. 
Okay. I trust you. You hang up with Tomas and return the phone to the station attendant. Cassie offers you his hand. Galloway awaits. You and Cassian stroll down Galloway's main street. Just two more faces in the steady stream of people. Since we're going to be here for another day, we might as well make the most of it, right? Right. Finally have a romantic time together that's not marred by running or shooting or sneaking. I don't like the sound of them. You start to admire the outfits of the locals and the displays and the shop windows. If we're going to have a romantic day in Galloway, I should probably have the romantic out Galloway outfit. But of course. I mean, okay. Is it me, or does it look a bit weird with those shorts? You buy one of the outfits you saw on the mannequin, returning to Cassian to show off. Wow. I know we're supposed to blend in, but you always manage to stand down. I thought this would make me blend in. Now I look like a Galloway local. Cassian pulls you to him and then gives you a little spin to admire your new look. Sure do. It's actually sort of a turn-on. Everything's a turn-on for you. Can you blame me? But come on, let's head to the harbor. It's a rare sunny day on the coast, and locals and tourists alike are camped out on the grass by the walls and the canal that feeds into the harbor. Cassie leads you across the bridge so you can admire the city from across the water. It's beautiful. Some people say it's the most beautiful city in Ireland. I'll go ask Jack Septicai that. I think every city is amazing in, in, in its own way. Honestly, I just love cities. I have a hard time seeing that sometimes, since, well, you saw where I grew up. Why do cities appeal to you so much? I love... Living with you. <laughs> that has nothing to do with the city. The diversity. So many people, and different kinds of people, and cultures, and food. Ah, I see what you mean. In my small town, there was a pretty limited range of people and experiences. It makes the city so much more vibrant. I feel like worldly, without having to travel all over the world. Well, we can do uh, anything you want in this city. This is sort of our last chance to enjoy ourselves here. You think of them for a moment, gazing at the city in the gentle waves of the harbor. I usually have things all planned out down to the second, and feel sort of weird not to have an itinerary. Weird, but freeing. Maybe we can just wander for a while, see what we find. Then she quickly jumps out of the boat and walks into the water. <laughs> Sounds perfect. Listen, I'm never going to let that moment go, okay? You cross over the bridge and head back to the heart of Galloway. As you're walking down the road, you spot a couple taking pictures in a side alley near the canal. Is that street art? Oh, looks like. Too bad our phones uh, have been through the ringer. Maybe we can find a disposable camera in one of the shops. Or a Polaroid. That's a good idea. And we can have at least a few pictures to commemorate our trip. Re <sighs> really? You look around the street for the right shop. Let's see if they have any Polaroids in there. You mainly find out what you're looking for, buying a package of blank photo cards to put in the camera. Let's go stake out a place in front of some iron. You head down the alley and see a wall adorned with some colorful swirls and shapes near the canal. I haven't used one of these cameras in forever. What a throwback! You struggle for a moment to fit one of the blank photo cards into the camera before taking, uh, making a noise of triumph. Smile! You put the camera up to your face and point it at Cassian. And then it gives us... The camera gives us a satisfying click and spits the photo card back out. Are we supposed to uh, be taking photos together? I wanted to test it first. You shake the photo for a few moments, and you both lean in to take a look. You look so surprised, really. Like a dork. I told you I wasn't ready. I'm keeping this forever. The one time you weren't perfect. Careful now. I know where you sleep. 
you tuck the photo away and load another blank into the camera. You don't have to load one by one, kids. It came in like packages of 12 to 16. Alright, we only have a few of these, uh, so no more messing around. Cassian takes a camera from you and pulls you to him. You position yourselves against the wall and he holds out a cam the camera in front of both of you. Ready? Cheese! Bzz, tsk, e. The photo pops out and you take a look. I think we need to angle it a little more to the left. Welcome to the good old days of selfies. Where each selfie actually cost you money. After taking a bunch in front of the various hearts of the walls, you're down to your last one. How do you want to pose for the last one? Got anything special? Mm, kiss his cheek. Come here, you. You stand on your tiptoes to kiss Cassian on the cheek. You can feel him smiling and hear the click of the camera. You wait for it to develop, revealing the photo. You both look so happy and in love, and yet so natural. This may be my favorite one we've taken. Mine too. I want to make it a pictogram profile pic when we get home. You carefully put all the photos together and tuck them away. For once, I'm happy I did a touristy thing. These all turned out great. I didn't want to push my luck, but I know of another touristy thing we could do in Galloway. Oh? Public bounce. Wow, wow. I think you, uh, you'll like it, though. It's back on the main street. Oh, we're doing this on the main street. <gasps> you step inside of one of the many Kladak shops in Galloway, marveling at the glittering pieces. So many designs to choose from. The Kladak ring was uh, first created uh, just a short stroll from here, but you can see they've expanded on the design a little since 1700. You peer into the glass case featuring a pair of silver earrings with a sparkling gem set into the heart. Oh, it's pretty. It's an emerald. Ooh, look at these. They're so pretty. Gorgeous. Just like you. Glance at a tiny price tag. Your eyes getting a little wide. Gorgeous comes at a price, I guess. Yes, but gorgeous isn't mass produced by a machine where 90% of the crap is fake. Ah, yes. Still, you have a hard time drawing your eyes away to look at the, the other earrings in the case. Mm, no. I guess the simple look is nice. When have any of your fashion choices been simple? When has anything with this book been simple? You glance between the two pairs of earrings again. I can tell you want one, so just pick. I'll buy you whatever your heart desires. Personally, I think that pair with a gem would suit you. Long story short, folks, we're, Nami is not the MC. Cassian's the MC, and we're just buying everything for her. Think about it. it. Makes sense, doesn't it? I really want the ones with the gemstone. They're just too stunning to pass on. I, I hope you'd pick those. Cassian motions to the jeweler who removes them from the case and places them in a velvet box. Cassian pays and then presents the box to you. With the Kaladak ring, you have to wear it on your right hand with the point of the heart towards you, since uh, we're in a relationship. Until, of course, some. Um, <clears throat> but uh, since you haven't really... Cassian trails off for a moment before opening the box and taking out the earrings. I'm uh, not sure what the tra tradition is with the earrings, but I hope they'll uh, show you that your heart is taken. They're earrings, dog. There's no tradition with them. They're, you just put them in the ear loophole. Gently brushing your hair aside, Cassian lips on the earrings. You look into the mirror of one of the jewelry counters. He smiles, Cassian appears over your shoulder. You tilt your head up to cast Cassian on the neck. My heart is definitely spoken for. Until a ring pops out and then she's like, as, as is mine. Fingering <clears throat> your new earrings. You leave the shop and returning to the Galloway streets just as night has fallen. You stop dead in your tracks after a few short steps away from the jewelry stop. What is it? Did you see someone suspicious? Talk to me, Nami. No, it's just... I haven't had a single beer since we got to Ireland. I'm pretty sure that's illegal. Wait, you're in Ireland. You don't go for the beer, fam. You go for the whiskey. Or the rum. Cassian lets out a sigh of relief and chuckles. 
I'm uh, sure you're safe from the law, but we best rectify the situation immediately, just in case. He points across the street to a pub, opening the door for you as you enter. The warm wood bar and the familiar smell of whiskey, keyword whiskey, feel like an old friend to you. You and Cassius lied onto the bar stools in order to pint supply the black stuff. After waiting for you for it to properly settle, the bartender sets your drinks in front of you. A point. I bet this is the best beer I've ever had. God damn it, we literally emphasize whiskey and she still got a beer. Fuck me. I bet this is yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, then no use waiting. Salante. Salante. You clink your glasses and take a long drink, smacking your lips in delight and sighing. Yep, the best. Try and savor it, eh? We might not get another opportunity before we uh, have to meet Tomas. You both sit there in the comfortable silence for a bit, sipping your beers and taking in the atmosphere. Since we're drinking, I want to hear some quality drinking stories from you. I'll share if you do. Seems fair. What do you want to know about? I want to hear about the first time you got drunk, when you turned 21, your most embarrassing story. Going right for the jugular, huh? Come on, it can't be that bad. I'll even go first. So I was at my best friend's wedding, or friend's wedding, and I'd been hitting the bottle a little too hard at dinner. And when it came time for speeches... No, you didn't. Oh yeah, I got up on the mic, started talking about how stupid marriage is, and then it's a modern invention by the patriarchy to enslave us all, and all this stuff. My friend's brother and some security tried to escort me out, but I guess I kept running away and crawling under tables. Apparently. I don't actually remember much of it, but I saw a video later on. I also stole the bouquet and literally punted it to save the other women from the pressure of getting married. Yep, you sound like a lot of fun at the uh, parties. Mmm, <clears throat> sarcasm. It took them half an hour to finally catch me. Obviously that friendship ended right then and there, and I haven't been invited to a single wedding since. Yep, told your fun at parties. Nah, me, the wild woman. I never would have guessed. My wayward youth. Your turn. A big smile spreads across his face, and he launches into a story excitedly. Okay, so uh, I went to this football match when I was visiting some cousins here. It was uh, my top team, so I decked out in full kit, minus the cleats. Uh, I was very excited, too. Uh, a very exciting match, and we've been drinking a lot. Like, somehow we ended up on this after party with the team. I must have stumbled up to my favorite player and asked him to sign my jersey because I woke up the next morning with a sign. That's not the most embarrassing story. That's just a story. He laughs. He stops talking to burst out laughing, looking at you expectedly. That's not even at all embarrassing. What? Of course it is. I'm my favorite player and I don't even remember an abbering. Hilarious. You and I have very different definitions of embarrassing. You're both still laughing at your stories when you hear the distinct sound of a fiddle. The player starts with a few notes before launching into a rousing tune. Soon, another pub patron joins in with a flute and the bartender drumming on the bar enthusiastically. By the way, at the end of the video, I'll share my most embarrassing tale. What's happening? Was there a band scheduled to play? No, true Irish pub music comes spontaneously, just like this. A few people get up out of their seats and start to dance. The guessing turns to you with a mischievous grin. Is the spontaneity growing on you? I know you're a good dancer from the first night I met you. Oh, fine, we'll dance. How many bloody diamond choices do you need? You finish your drink and hop off the bar stool, Cassie and follow suit with a grin as he takes your hand in his. I don't know the steps. Neither do I. We'll just make it up as we go. You put your hand on his shoulder and he slides one of his around your waist, pulling you close to him so there's not even an inch between you. He starts to maneuver you across the floor with another with other couples. You bounce up and down to the rhythm of the music, moving to a tight circle. Ah! You notice a few people kicking all of their feet out to the sides as they twirl, and you try to mimic them. Now you're getting it. Cassian releases your hand, putting it on your waist and spinning you around. His fingers trail over the midsection centrally before he stops you by gripping your hips. You're on your hands over his shoulder, still hopping to the music. You're so relaxed. I really get to see you like this. You lean in close to whisper in his ear. With your clothes on. 
I grew up in pumps just like this. Maybe this is my element. And for uh, not knowing the moves, you're actually re doing pretty good. So are you. Like I said, Irish music is about spontaneity. No one is making sure you're doing everything perfectly. Cassian takes one of your hands again as the song seems to be coming to a crescendo. You follow along with him, feeling the heat of his body mixing with yours. The impromptu band plays a few final notes and the pub erupts into claps and cheers. Cassian expertly dips you, planting his lips on yours in a fierce kiss as you wrap both your arms around his neck to hold you there. Mm. He pulls you upright again, but he doesn't break the kiss immediately. When he finally pulls away, his eyes are shining with mischief and passion. Thank you very much for the dance, Nami. I needed that. If you look at her, if any of you have ever watched Star Trek Next Generation, remember the Irish people that were transported on the Enterprise? She looks just like them. She's also against marriage. Kind of like that woman was, too. I think we both then. The band seems to be preparing for another song, but you settle back on your bar stools, happy to just watch this time. What had popped up on my head, leave me alone. Just another beer, and you Cassian leave the pub and step into the Galway Street. Even at night, the city is still alive with conversation and song. Cassian wraps an arm around you, looking around at the city lights. Donovan always loved the city at night. Said it was all the lights. But that aside, hangs his head a little. I still can't believe I never knew Finn killed my brother. You hug Cassian close to you. You should have. You couldn't have known. You look around the darkened street. Maybe what you need right now is a distraction. Really? We're gonna play a card game called Blow and Slow, but uh, we just don't have the card this time. More of a distraction than you. But something to really take your mind off in. Cassian thinks for a moment and then starts to lead you down the street away from the pub. Actually, that gives me an idea. What is it? You'll have to wait and see. Oh, come on, you know I hate surprises. Let's just say it's not totally legal. And it's gonna be another diamond choice, isn't it? What? Oh, okay. It ends right there. Hmm. You know, too many diamond choices in this uh, chapter. We gotta wait till next week to, you know, do another four to five. So, uh, without further ado, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Head down to the description below. Links to social media, Discord, for you links to support me and my content. Now, on to my most embarrassing story, or one of. Um, basically high school, PE class, we were on the uh, basketball court, and someone ran up and pants to me. I mean, it's fine, you know. I, I was a little embarrassed, and that was it. Gym teacher came to me, and he was like, yo, you should have did what they did in that movie, which, me being a sheltered kid from, you know, most of Hollywood's crap, I was like, I don't know what you mean. He's like, well, there was a scene in the movie. He's like, that happened to a guy. And he says, uh, the guy just stood there and adjusted his junk and just smiling around. He's like, me, you know, you, you, he says, you were, you were fine. You know, basically meaning, uh, <clears throat> I am fine. What they think there was tinkly winkly there. Anyway, next uh, time they traded to pants, maybe the belt was on a little bit tighter and they failed repeatedly. It was cute. It was adorable. You fail at life. Hope you're watching. Bye. No. Thanks, guys, for watching. Catch you on the next video. Peace.